three, go! Uh, we're in the theater, folks. We're not mm. at the house. <laughs> you can whistle and yell the show card contest tonight. Lights down. Okay, that that was time, but who cares? Okay, what is this all about? Well, between the bells is the life of students when they're not in class, or maybe why they took a class. It's kind of like Alexander's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. It's kind of, if you're 16, 17, 18 years old, what is it like and what are some of the trials and tribulations of going to school, okay? Uh, it is not meant to put anybody down. If you're gonna try to find a deep message tonight, like skeletons in the closet, no, there is no message. This is a slice of life of high school students. If it feels negative, it was kind of created negatively. It's kind of like Alexander's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. It's kind of like a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day of a high school kid, okay? So uh, that's kind of what it's all about. It was totally written by East Noble. We are thrilled to say that we won the regional competition. And the first time we did First time in the history of, of any time that we beat Carmel. Uh, we <laughs> were first, Carmel was second, and Lake Central was third, and nobody knows where Lake Central was. It's clear over in the boondock somewhere. So um, enjoy and then stay, but stay afterwards, and I'm gonna introduce the kids. We'll send the basketball player over to play basketball, and then you guys are gonna give us some criticism. Okay. Um, lights out and oh Jonathan, are you gonna time? Yes. Okay, and go. When lights come up, the time starts. Literally, there is no... 
got one behind me. <sighs> I'm always ready to party. No, I don't miss this mama. Come on, go faster. You're going five under. This girl's got to get to choir class pronto.
I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Estados Unidos. I feel so bad for her. Liberty and justice for all. She got it. Thank you, students. Please remain standing for a dress code check. <laughs> this candy will not go up anymore. It's not fair. I can't help. I'm blessed in the chest. <laughs> Hide the ears. Hide the tail. This is the only teacher who doesn't let me express myself. But you know what? I'm me. <laughs> of course. Of course I chose the one day we have a random dress code check to wear my baggy shorts. Last time I wore these shorts, they said they're excessively baggy. How are these excessively baggy? Last time, they said I'd be hiding a weapon. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Stage 26. 900 hours. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Yes, they are checking dress codes. So how many days straight can I get away with wearing shorts the size of a postage stamp? I'm going for a record. And here comes the teacher. And wham, I beat my record 26 days in a row, baby. <laughs> Teachers, please send students in violation of the dress code to the APC immediately. Anyone got a turtleneck? <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Mrs. Lewandowski gives me that look. You know what it is. The way she slowly takes off her glasses and sticks them in her mouth. It's so obvious. I can tell she wants me by the way she says, Matt, vocabulary, where is it? It was due last week. I mean, I know I'm good looking, but is she trying to get fired? I can tell that she totally wants me. Uh, by the way, she always gives me detentions. It's so she can spend that extra hour each day alone with me. Uh, I can tell it. Because whenever she says it, she says it like this. Matt, detention after school. <laughs> She's so hot when she's mad. <laughs> Because one day, I'm going to rule the world. OK, so maybe I won't be president of the country or of a big company. But today, I am student body president. And I'm in here to learn how to govern my people the right way. Watch out, Obama. Samantha's coming through. <laughs> There's only one reason I'm taking French, and that reason is John Luke, the French boy that came to our school last year. Oh, he was so perfect. He wore a beret and everything. Sadly, after the school year, he returned to France. I will never forget his last words to me. I will never be able to forget you, even if I tried. It was so romantic. <laughs> he said he'd never forget me. Anyway, I'm hoping to take French so I can learn French. And then I'll go to France. And I'll find him, and we'll be together forever. So, do you guys really want to know why I'm here today? In this fashion and textiles class, it's because of all the ladies, there are 16 girls and two guys. And the other guy, well, he has a boyfriend. So the odds, they're my favor. <laughs> I mean, look at them. They, they are all perfect. Myself, I'm not. But, Hey, I'm learning to sew. They have to love me, right? Well, anyway, whew, I'm in heaven from here on out. Students, we have an announcement from our very own student body president, Samantha Hunter. Well, howdy, folks. It's me here, your student body president. Just here to remind you about the theme dance this Friday night after the football game. The Wild West. So pull up your old leather chaps and grab a dozy dough -do partner and gallop your way to the gym for a roaring good time. Don't get four dollars, Mr. Lenny. Our school has a very strict policy against PDA. Right here, page four, paragraph two, sentence five. Nothing more than folding hands while on school grounds. Yet I pass the same five couples every day during classic period. There's the one of each twilight couple. The tongue warriors. <laughs> the over dramatic gazers. 
the tonsil hockey players, <laughs> and the ever so classy windshield wipers licking each other's faces like dogs in heat. I swear, there must be pheromones in the air. If I had a boyfriend, I would most definitely not participate in those types of activities. Oh, who am I kidding? I'd love to have a boyfriend to make out with in the hallways instead of being forever alone. I'm gonna wait, Chubby. Get a room, fatty. Hey, leave her alone, jerk. Dream mean. Really? I get it already. Name one junior's fashion designer that thinks about me. I'm the only person who did this to myself. Hey, I'm big and I'm gorgeous. I am so sick of it. All the looks we get walking in the hallways, all the stares we get when we go to school. I get it. I'm a bigger girl, but that doesn't mean I can't have a normal high school relationship. He's my boyfriend and he doesn't care. So why should anyone else? He says he loves me, and I think he really does, and he says I'm beautiful. So that's all that matters, right? What does bigger even mean, anyways? I've heard people calling me that in the hallway, but they must be referring to my big personality. I mean, the BAM! <laughs> <laughs> I've got curves, and we all know that's what attracts the men. So look out, ladies, because this girl's coming, and no one can stop her, because I'm big, Beautiful and proud. I hate the way I look. I tried so hard to be skinny, but I just can't. And all my friends and my family say you're still beautiful, but I know the line right to my face. But the thing is, I try. I really do. I've tried to eat healthy, and I've tried all those exercises, but nothing works. But I made myself like this. I destroyed myself. You see, my problem is the clothing that I love and the clothing that I look good in are two completely different things. Name one junior's fashion designer that thought about how that hot pink cheetah bandeau would look on a size 16. I mean, come on, any plus size clothes, clothing store that I go into that has somewhat decent clothes, I could buy a size 14, and in all reality, it fit a size 24. Get over it, he loves me the way I am. There is no way I'm walking out of any store looking like the Pope. I'm gonna do what I want and I'll look fantastic doing it. I guess I just have to deal with it. My weight will not define me. It's time for your daily lunch update. What's that in the air, you ask? Well, it's the smell of our cafeteria's culinary delights. Today's menu is chili mac, pick em up, corn, pears, and milk. Now, I would like you to think of the most delicious meal you've ever eaten. Either it be steak, crab, or even potatoes. I bet you're thinking of that salty, savory piece of perfection melting in your mouth. Oh, each bite teasing you towards another, your brain telling you more, more, more! <laughs> but your stomach telling you no, no, no! <laughs> and topping it off with a glass of your favorite refreshment. Sprite. <laughs> now, I would like you to think of the complete polar opposite, the school lunch. <laughs> Overcooked and undercooked at the exact same time. I mean, it looks like it should live in the deep, dark crevices of the ocean that somehow made it onto our lunch trays. Yum. <laughs> Every high schooler knows what I'm talking about when I say the weird table. Those kids who share a silent and awkward lunch that no one's to sit by. But guess where I ended up? Yep, the weird table. You see, I had this all planned out. I was gonna sit with Becky and Julie in the recent new seat, but they forgot. So I glanced around the room trying to find an empty seat. I could feel the stairs were really looking at me. So I sped walked away to where I left them belong. At the weird table. <laughs> <laughs> $1, $1, $1, $2, $1, $3, $1, $4. Oh, of course, the one day that we have my favorite lunch, and I'm three cents short. I mean, you'd think you'd let a girl give a girl a break and let me pay you back tomorrow? Nope. I can feel the stairs and hear the laughter from the kids behind me in line. 
You can't just let them go in front of me. My face was as red as the ketchup on my wasted tray. This lunch isn't even worth it anymore. Oh, no. No, not again. This happens to me every day. No matter how hard I try to be on time to lunch, I'm always late. And there's never an open seat. Oh, this is terrible. All my friends have abandoned me. All three of them. <laughs> <laughs> and what's worse, everyone's staring at me. I can feel my social status dropping as I speak. There's got to be a table around here somewhere. There's one. To the owner of the black sedan, you left your lights on. Also, the acupressure exam has been moved to room 528. Excuse me, the acupressure exam was moved to room 258 and not 528. I apologize. Due to the number of students taking the acupressure exam, <laughs> would students with the last name A through L report to room 163, and those with the last name M through Z go to room 417. Thank you. Why are you so tall? What size shoe do you wear? How's the weather up there? Did it hurt me fall the these stock? Do you play basketball? Look guys, I found big foot! Were you born that tall? Yeah, it was a painful burden for my mother. <laughs> I'd just like to go one day, one day, without someone asking, how tall are you? Or some other remark. I'm tall. We get it, people. You say the same things every day. I can't go to the store and buy anything. I can't even walk through the halls without someone saying something. One time in middle school, I got kicked off the bus for two weeks. Because some kid asked me every day, how's the weather up there? I spit in his face and said it was raining. <laughs> Being tall is rough. Whoa, you think you have problems. <laughs> <laughs> Look everybody, here comes the queer. Have you ever read the Bible? So that's why he turned me down. Stop begging for attention. Why can't you just be normal? Hey, when did you choose to be gay? And when did you choose to be straight? <laughs> Oh, shucks. Late to class again. Jim! My favorite class. I always get picked last. Like when Mr. Brown asks for captains, I'm like, Hey, Mr. Brown, pick me! Over here, I'm not invisible, just in case you hadn't noticed. But he always looks right through me. And then, when team captains are picked, guess who's always the last one picked? This guy right here. What's wrong with me? I mean, I guess nobody wants a perfectly chiseled man on their team. <laughs> but seriously, I'm always picked last in everything. Dodgeball, basketball, tennis, badminton. <clears throat> like last week when we played badminton, everyone else had a partner but me. So I got to be partners with our overly aggressive ex-marine gym teacher. <laughs> I still have bruises everywhere. Well, I guess I can give it another go. Hey, Mr. Brown, pick me! Oh my gosh, my computer died again. You know, ever since my school joined the digital age to make things easier, things haven't been much easier. Whether it's my hard drive crashing and me losing every single one of my assignments, or I'm getting distracted on Twitter. And I can't even remember the last time I took a test on paper. My life has become a world of technology. Twitter! 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 So much drama! Blocked again! Blocked again! Blocked again! No! Does anybody have a charger? I've got a charger! <laughs> Does anybody have a charger? No! <laughs> <laughs> no headphones! Explorer! Firefox! 
for this show? Teenagers. Kids. Kids. It's all about kids. Okay? So, for some of you, it took you a little bit of time to warm up. Folks, you have no idea when you do this for kids what some of the reactions are going to be. Uh, the ladies will love that speed up. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got to put 800 crazy theater kids together and it, it does it does things. Um, good job, guys. Some of you, I needed more sound. I needed more sound tonight than some of you, though. Uh, now, you've got to keep in mind that some of these are seasoned actors. Some of these are the best we have at East Noble. For some people, it's the very first time. Uh, is there anybody here that tonight is the very first time you ever performed in public for somebody? Well, besides the last 